Hello everyone, welcome back to this tutorial. Sorry for the uh, late video, we just uh, get some uh, stuff I need to do. So we're gonna continue back on this uh, GraphQL tutorial with Golang. So uh, now what I would like to do, it's to finally just kind of getting uh, new knowledge on some stuff we didn't uh, see yet. What I mean by that, it's right now, if we look at our schema, we can do uh, kind of plain query, plain mutation, all of that is perfect. But how can we make a query of a meetup? Where here, what we're gonna do with this meetup, it's we want to filter some of the meetup. So what I mean by that, it's example, if a user want to search uh, a meetup by name and stuff like that, I would like to be able to do this. So this is what I want to do in this uh, tutorial. So. The way that's gonna work, it's first thing gonna create a new input object called meetup filter. And this thing here is gonna be what we're gonna pass here because here inside type query, it's almost like what you can do here is a mutation. You can pass an argument. And one of the argument I want to pass here, it's a filter method. And as you can see here, I don't say require. If I would like that to be required, I will have put a bang symbol, but I don't want it now. And now here, I want to be able to filter by name. And I'm gonna say a string, and also this one I don't want to require. So maybe later we're gonna be able to uh, filter by description and other stuff like that. But for now, that's gonna be only for, by name. After that, another thing I would like to do, and we can do this in some time because it's pretty simple, it's if I want to do some pag pagination, you have so many ways, yeah, I know, you can do relay stuff and things like that, but for this tutorial, we're going to just go with the plain limit and offset. So we want the limit to be an int and we want also the offset to be an int. As you can see here, both of them are not required. But what I can do, it's I can do like you can do in like JavaScript or stuff like that, have a default value. So here I want my default value of this limit if it's not set to be 10. After that here, uh, I want my offset to be zero by default. Okay, so by doing this, what that means is if I don't provide this limit value, that's gonna be 10. If I don't provide this offset value, that's gonna be zero. Perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back to my resolver and I'm gonna regenerate our GQL gen file. Now, perfect. Now this is working. Now, if I go to my query resolver, because now we have modifier query, now we get this one. We do not implement anymore the query resolver interface. What happened right now is our meetup don't have all argument we need. So what I do for me, what I do when I, uh, I have this kind of issue and I want it to make it simpler, it's I uh, go to definition to this query resolver interface and I'm gonna copy, paste the full argument uh, list right there. And I'm gonna jump back here and I'm gonna just paste that there. So now this meetups now follow this interface. Now here, what I want to do, it's I want to pass down this filter, this limit and this offset below. So this get meetups gonna be more, much more smart than what he do right now, but I don't want to keep my logic inside my resolver. Because example, if in the future you want to have a, a REST API, uh, on top of what you have already. This way you can just reuse the same code. So this thing can become, uh, can go to your controller and stuff like that. Now, if I go to my get meter, now what happened, you're gonna see we're gonna get one of uh, one issue. It's now I can have my filter, but the thing is, I'm gonna need to get that from the GraphQL. The issue is this GraphQL stuff gonna make, um, how you, I don't know how you say that, but like a, a circular dependency, what happened, it's, the GraphQL package here need some time, some dependency. I mean, it don't gonna happen here because um, we have kind of inject some of the resolver stuff there inside the server. So we do not import really the Postgres stuff. But the thing is now what happened, it's we're gonna get this circular dependency where the GraphQL package need the Postgres package and the Postgres package need the GraphQL package. So what we're gonna do for now, it's we're gonna fix that by jumping to our GQL gen file and we're gonna now change the generation to go to model folder. 
this way what happened it's now if i move up this model gen to my model now my editor do this for myself but uh, i don't know if that's gonna do this for you but he changed the package name and gonna update everywhere where we have it example here etc so now what happened it's now this package become like uh, I don't know what I mean, almost like in Postgres where you have a many to many like a joint table, but here it's kind of like a joint package where finally this package is required by both, but this package never required one of them. So we can use it. So now if I go back to this meetup, now I can get my media model, that meetup filter, I can get my limit and I can get my offset and both are uh, a pointer to a, an integer. Uh, in Go, if you have both argument is the same like that you can just put finally your type at the last one it's your choice now how can we add those filter those limited down the offset when those things are dynamic into our uh, or um, go pg here what i decide to do here it's i create an instance of a query where i'm gonna just take what we have here okay and after that here we're gonna do the query that select and this is where we're going to do the error. But now what I can do, it's here. I can check if my filter is not nil. Because the thing is, this filter, we need to check first is it's nil. Because I cannot do like uh, filter.name. Because maybe this filter himself is nil. So I'm going to get this issue where I want to try to get something inside a nil. And it's not working. So if my filter is not nil, that means the user did provide a struct filter. I'm going to check if my filter.name is not nil and also i'm gonna make sure then the value of this one is not an empty string i don't want to filter to an empty string that if i do this i never gonna get something so i don't want to do this now what i can do is i can call my query and pass it the where condition where i'm gonna say hey i want to query by the name where the I like. So if you don't know what is I like, it's almost like the, I mean, it's a way for you to do, a, I don't know how I can say that, but um, I mean, it's a way for you to uh, kind of create by certain, example, if I say, uh, give me uh, LO, they're gonna search everything inside our uh, Postgres database where we're gonna have the letter L and O together. The I like here, I'm going to make sure that they're going to match. And I mean, think about this, like they almost like something. So yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, it's not a Postgres course. It just, uh, but yeah, something to know. So now here, the way we're going to work with I like, it's we're going to format a string. So by using sprint F. And what I want to do is to pass it my filter name, okay, as argument. Thing it's how are we gonna filter that so first thing if i do this like that that's perfect we're gonna filter by um just the string but i think it's in postgres what we want it's we want something like um uh, yeah i don't know john like that this is what i want to do but if i do john like that what i mean it's i don't care if john is at the end of a, a word or in the middle of a word or if he, you see like he, uh, this this john like that gonna work if i have example i don't know like something like johnny now i'm gonna get this but if example i um if example i say i don't want uh, this uh, uh, percentage that means john here need to become at the beginning so what happened it's after that if i have something like hello johnny that never gonna work because john is not anymore in the start so by doing this kind of percent here i don't care where the john is inside this string so yeah it's a quick course but the thing is how can we do this with the format sprint f because you're gonna see if i do this and if i do this now i'm gonna get an issue now I get too many argument for format string expected zero actual one. What happened? It's percentage percentage. So a percentage in front of a percentage, it's an escape. So what happened right now? It's almost like I have percentage percentage s percentage. I have no uh, 
I don't need like to kind of inject the filter that name to a string because here we don't have nothing as an argument to be inject. So the way you work with them, it's you need to put two percentage in front of what you want. So here is our argument and here it's a percentage who escaped this percentage and here, oops, sorry. And here it's a percentage who escaped this one. Okay, so you are. Now we're gonna also check if limit is not nil. We want to add to our tree a limit of the value of the limit. And finally, the same with the offset. And we pass like that. Now I'm gonna restart the server. Now what I can do is I can do a finally control R to restart my server. Just I put the Google server as a, a configuration. And maybe what we're gonna I mean, we're gonna start with that and we're gonna see okay so here I've already prepared some stuff so example here if I filter my meetup with the name e uh, ir I'm gonna get my turn meetup and my first meetup because you see ir ir if I just say i I'm gonna each meetup who have I uh, inside the name the letter i okay you see here and here if I say a is the same if I say nothing, I filter nothing. If I say I don't know, if I say example my, I'm gonna get my and my. So you see, we get what we want. Another thing we can try is example the limit, do the limit work? So if I say limit one, I'm getting just one. If I say limit two, I'm getting just two. If I say offset one, you see right now I get two and three. So if I say offset one, I get three and four because the two, we, we jump on top of the two. We don't want it. So yes, it worked. And now can we filter plus limit? So if I say name and I say A, you see, I get a new name. But if I don't have an offset, now I'm going to get both. Perfect, it worked. So as you can see, this is what I kind of like about GQL Gen. It made our life really easier because they type everything for us and we just finally just plug our logic with that. Now, one thing we can also do is I'm gonna just start a debugger and I just want you to see what we get, what we receive, okay? So example, if I'm sending that, what do we get when we get to the meetup here? So that's why you're gonna say I want to filter, okay? Right now, we are good. So uh, yeah, it's really small. I don't know if I can put bigger debugger debugger i don't think i can make it bigger but yeah i mean uh sorry for that i don't know if i can make it bigger looks like not but it can be helpful so you see right now i send filter name a limit to offset zero what i'm receiving here is i'm receiving a filter with the name of a that's what we one and we receive here a limit pointer two and zero okay that's perfect if i pass nothing here and i'm gonna just uh restart i should have just restart but yeah with that now look what i'm receiving so you see i just send the name this is what i mean by the default value when we did that here limit and offset it's now if we look back in our meetup here you see filter get the name that's perfect but look here limit got 10 and that's because of the default value we just sent that here and you see offset default to zero and yeah that's what we want that's perfect and if here we send nothing and we go like that and here i just restarted the bugger and now i send that now you see my uh, m is the one where the DB, that's perfect. Filter is nil, limit is 10 and zero. So now example, if I put a, um, a breakpoint here, a breakpoint, maybe more here and here. And now I jump to the next one. You see, now what happened? I get my query, my filter here get, and now remember this thing, this filter was nil. So we never gonna inject our new um, query where so finally our query right there I have nothing about uh, the filter name where we have the ally but here what happened is the limit is not nil so now we pass it the limit as a value of 10 and finally we do the same with uh, offset 
And now finally, when we get to this point here, our meetup is now filled with this four item, uh, five item, three, five, yeah. And as you can see, they get everything we want. So yeah, it's, uh, uh, this is what happened. Um, I really, if you don't really know what is I like, I really encourage you to go and look at that. Just search for Postgres I like, and you're going to see, going to make more sense than my really bad explanation. But yeah, so I hope you enjoy. I hope you've learned uh, new stuff here. Uh, my plan is uh, really in this tutorial is to show some stuff like, I mean, it's not really for building the app, but maybe showing other stuff. So what I would like also to show, it's like a, a, a working with Enum. Also, I would like to show you how to work with un, uh, Union. So uh, Union, and I want Enum. This is uh, both two things I want to uh, show you uh, before the end of this tutorial. And yeah, I think we're gonna learn a lot. And also I want to show you how to do uh, authentication. So I hope you enjoy, and we're gonna talk in the part seven. Bye, everyone.